In this part, we are going to learn two more data types, lists and tuples. Both are very similar and both are simply data containers for other data types, which means they are storing other kinds of data. That's what a container does. And they can contain any kind of data. This could be a string, a number, it could also be a Boolean, other lists and tuple, and a lot more. There's no limitation on what they can store. A tuple would look something like this. We are starting with normal brackets and we're also ending with normal brackets. And inside of that, we have values that are being separated by a comma. For example, in this case, we are starting with an integer, then we're adding a comma, then we have a string, another comma, then we have a Boolean value, another comma, and then we have a tuple inside of this original tuple which Python is totally fine with. And inside of this tuple, we have another string. And that is the only value for this tuple. So it really doesn't make too much sense. I just wanted to illustrate that you can do it. Besides a tuple, we have a list. And a list is looking very similar. The only difference now is that to create a list, we need square brackets. But other than that, we are still adding values inside, like integers, strings, booleans, and other lists. And we are separating each value with a comma, like here, here, and here. On the surface, those two would look identical. And you would be kind of correct, the two are very similar. But there's one incredibly important difference. Tuples are what is called immutable, which just means that they cannot be changed. For example, you could use something like list append and this would work because a list can be changed. But a tuple and depending a value would not work because we cannot change a tuple under any circumstance. If you really wanted to add a new value to a tuple, you would have to create a whole new tuple and combine the old values with a new value, which you can do fairly easily. But if you are going to do that, you could just use a list. It would be much easier. That being said, because of this immutability, tuples process a tiny bit faster in Python. Although the difference is so small, you are hardly ever going to notice. I guess let's have a look at all of this and see how far we get. Let's get started by creating some lists. And a list, let me store it in a variable again, you are always creating with square brackets. And in here, you are adding values that are separated by a comma. For example, you could be adding numbers like 1, 2, and 3. You could add floating point values like 4.5. And you could be adding words like, let's say, word. Those are the data types we have already seen, but any data type would be valid in here. Now, if I print my list, we can see the output we have entered into this list. It does work pretty seamlessly. What you can also do is to use the functions we have already seen. For example, len is now going to give us the amount of items we have inside of this list, which right now is five. Finally, you could also use the list with methods and lists do have quite a lot of methods. I suppose a simple one would be clear. This one removes every value from the list. Meaning if I print my list after running this method, I am getting five items from this line here. And this line now is going to print an empty list. I suppose if you want to look this up in Google, all you would have to do is look for something like Python list methods once again, you are going to find a lot of different websites that talk about it. The official Python documentation, this one here, is probably the one you want to use. And in here, let me hide this one, we have append, extend, insert, remove, and a lot more. The one we have just seen was called clear. This one is removing all items from a list, and it is equivalent to something else. What this part here means, we are actually going to learn in a couple of minutes. It's super useful. For now, just keep in mind, there are a lot of different methods in here that you could be using. 
Another easy one would be reverse. This one reverses the list. Let's have a look at this one. I suppose we could change clear to reverse. And now if I run the code, we are getting the entire list in the reverse order compared to this list here. Just like with words or well with strings, the main way you are going to learn the different methods is by just using Python and encountering different problems and finding the solutions to them. And most of the time, the solution is going to involve some kind of method. At some point, you are going to get used to different methods for a list. That being said, also, you don't need to know all of them by heart. I myself completely forgot about reverse until I saw it when I prepared for this video. But well, with that, we have lists. And I guess we have functions and we have methods, at least in a very basic outline. Although there's one really important method that I do want to talk about. And that one is called append. And this one appends a value. I think the name makes sense here. Basically, anything you add in here as an argument will be added at the end of the list. For example, if I added let's say a 10 at the end, run all of this. Now we can see all the way at the end, we have this 10. This would be one of the ways you add an item to a list. There are quite a few more, but this is a really basic one that I just want to cover for now. With that, we can look at the other kind of container and that is called a tuple. And the tuple, you let me save it in a variable that I called my tuple you would be creating with brackets. And in here again, you can add any kind of value you want. Could be a number, could be a floating point number. It could be a word or it could be a list as well that itself contains other values. Let's say seven, eight and nine. Let me comment out the earlier stuff and print my tuple. And there we go. Now we can see all the values we have added in here. A tuple and a list work in very similar ways, at least up to a point, because there is a major difference. That difference being that tuples cannot be changed under any circumstances. This means I couldn't run something like my tuple, append, and then let's use a 10 again the method we have used up here. If I run this line of code, we are getting an error. That tuple object has no attribute append. We also couldn't delete a value and we couldn't reverse the order of this tuple. Let me demonstrate the reverse one, this one here. This one also would not work on a tuple. Most of the time when you are using tuples, you generally only want to use tuples when you know you are not going to change the values. But most of the time, let's say 70, 80%, you are going to use a list. This one is the much more common data type because it is more flexible. With that covered, we have to cover a really important topic and that is how to pick elements from a tuple or a list. What that means is, for example, I might want to get this floating point value here from the list and then work with it. So how could I get this value? And for that, we need a specific process that in Python is called either indexing or slicing. The two are very much related. Let's talk about it actually. Let me actually go through this a bit more properly. To restate the problem, we want to pick one element from a list. This could also be a tuple. They both work in exactly the same way. For us to do that, we need to cover two important concepts. The first one is that Python assigns each value in a list or in a tuple an index number. If this is our list, Python would give each of these numbers an index. The first number is always going to be a zero. And then every successive number is going to be plus one of that number. Meaning the second value is one, the third value is two, and then so on. And a really important point to notice here is that we always start counting from zero, not one. And this can be a very annoying concept to deal with. I think for beginners, forgetting about this covers about half of all of your errors. 
just be ready for that. But anyway, the concept we have for now is that every item inside of a list has an index. And this index we can use to pick an element. And this works by adding square brackets after the list or tuple. In practice, this would look something like this. Right now, we have our list, and then after the list, we have another set of square brackets with an integer. And this integer is going to pick one specific index. Right now, the index 1, which is going to be the second element, this one here. Meaning this operation would return the value 2. And since we are using an index, this entire operation is called indexing. It works on quite a few data types. Lists and tuples should be fairly obvious. We could also be using it with strings because they are basically another kind of container. We can have a look at this one as well. However, indexing does not work on dictionaries and sets. Dictionaries work in a slightly different way and sets work in a very different way. We are going to see that later on. And I guess let's play around with all of this. Here I am back in my code and I want to comment out the two methods for the tuple and I want to uncomment my list. Meaning now I have a list and a tuple to work with. And I want to just pick some random elements from them. I guess we can start with my list. And in here I am using square brackets and now I need an integer. I'm going to pick zero just to pick the first element. This zero now is going to refer to the first element inside of my list or the one with the index zero. If we added a one, we will get the next element, two, three, four, and so on. To show all of this, we have to print it again. Now, if I run this, we are getting one indeed, the value up here. If I added a two in here and run this again, we are getting the integer three, which is this item here. We have zero, one, and two. All of this would also work with a tuple, meaning if I use my tuple, this tuple here, and now pick, let's say, the item number five. Run this again. We are now getting the list, this one here, at the end of the tuple, because this one is the element with the index five. We have zero, one, two, three, four, and five. What we can do now as well is to add another square brackets afterwards, because remember, what we are getting from this one here is going to return one item from this tuple. In this case, this list here, which means that this operation here stands in for this tuple. So when we add the square brackets afterwards, these ones here, we are basically adding the square brackets after here, and then we can take other elements from that. If I add a zero in here, we should be getting seven. My tuple five gets us this list here, and then the zero gets us the first element inside of it. These operations are fairly common. Right now, I assume they do seem quite confusing. But if you play around with them for a while, they should become fairly familiar. Just remember what is getting returned and how you can work with that. There's one more thing that you could be doing in here. Let me duplicate the line. I only want to use one indexing operation. What you can also do is go in the negative direction. For example, if I use negative one, we are getting the list again. What this negative one means is, we are always starting at zero, and if we go in the positive direction, we are basically going to the right. However, if we are choosing a negative number, we are going all the way to the back of the list and then going in the opposite direction, meaning this list here would be negative one, word would be negative two, and the 1.45 would be negative three, which means that negative three and four should have the same result unless I made an error. Let's try. If I enter negative three, we get 1.45. If I add four, we are getting word. And I just realized I can't count. Um, sorry about that. This should be a three and this is a four. Talking and writing can be kind of challenging. I guess you noticed this one already, but 
Now, what you should be able to see is if I add a three in here, we are getting 1.45. And if I add a negative three, we are also getting 1.45. All right, with that, we have basically all we need to get started with indexing. This is a very simple operation when it comes down to it. Although this video is getting kind of long. So let's do an exercise and then we finish this section. And what I want you guys to do, let me paste it in. Here's the exercise. We have a long string and of the string, I want you guys to pick one word or string and that is hello. That is going to be this element here. Although do notice here that this is a list inside of a list inside of another list. So you have to pick elements that are quite a bit nested. But if you paid attention so far, this should be doable. So pause the video now and try this one yourself. Righty, let's get started. And just to illustrate what is happening here, let me save all of this in a separate variable that I want to call solution var. And this is going to be, we always have to start with the exercise list. Now we need square brackets and we want to pick one item from here with the index. We have item number zero, we have item number one, and we have item number two. And item number one covers this entire list here. This is what we want. Meaning in here, I want item number one, which means if I print the solution variable and comment out all of the stuff above and run all of this now, we can see we have the list with one, two, three, four, five, and then the other list inside. And from this, we want to get another index. Now we have, let me clean this one up a tiny bit. Purely inside of this list here, we have a few more elements. We have zero, we have one, and then we have two. Two being this entire thing. This is all we want right now. Which means we now want the index number two. Now, if I print my solution, I get another list with zero and hello. We are getting very close. Now inside of this final list, this list alone here, we have two entries. We have zero and we have one. And one is our solution. Which means at the end of this, I want to add a one and then we should be done. So let's try and there we go. We get hello. Obviously, you would very rarely see something like this. This is very poor data management because it's a very messy list that is really hard to work with. But I guess it's a very good exercise.